All right, and now for number four, our good old friend Ruben. Okay, our good old friend Ruben wants to buy a car for a price of 285,000 South African rand. In other words, they're czar, okay? I hope I said that correctly. If not, sorry. He goes to a bank to get a loan. Okay, this is very important language here. To get a loan to buy a car. To be eligible for the loan, in other words, for the bank to say, yeah, sure, Ruben must make an initial down payment equal to 25% of the price of the car. All right, guys, this is a classic. It happens in real life all the time. Imagine you want to buy a house and the bank says, sure, but first pay half of the house or first pay 10% of the house. Now, how the percents actually are, how they work, how they calculate them, it's a mystery. I don't know too much about it, but the idea is you have to pay some of it up front. Okay, so that is why they mean by initial down payment, you have to pay a little bit up front. You have to pay a little bit right away. In this case, our good old friend Ruben has to pay 25% of it right away. All right, and so the bank, if Ruben decides to do this, the bank offers him a five-year loan for the remaining balance. So first he pays, and there's for the remaining balance, he's going to have to pay back at a 4.5% nominal interest rate per annum compounded monthly. And so here, there's so many buzzwords, man. It's crazy, but we'll go piece by piece, okay? And then even here, there's key information. Ruben will pay the loan in fixed payments at the end of each month. At the end of each month. And so for part A, part I, we need to find the original amount of the loan after the down payment is paid and give our exact answer. All right, so there's definitely a couple of things going on here. Let me give you a little bit of context. Okay, for part A, part I, we don't need too much context, right? For the, So for part A, part I, it's the OG amount of the loan after the down payment is paid. So first we need to find the down payment. And so the down payment would be the 285,000 and 25% of it, right? So this times 25% is going to give you how much he needs to do for the initial payment. And so the initial payment is going to be this 285 times 0 0.25. So this is his initial down payment, right? The 71,250. So that means that of the 285,000, he immediately does the down payment of 71,250, which gives him da da da, da da da, yada yada yada, bada bim, bada boom, that amount. So in other words, for part A, part A, you would say that after the down payment is paid, our good old friend Ruben owes the bank 213,750 czar. Some of you guys might be thinking, hmm, there's a quicker way to do this. If you take the 285, and technically you are, technically you need to take that 285 and do minus 25% of it, right? And so technically you can take the 285 and do 1 minus 0 0.25, which gives you the 285 times 0 0.75. And so, yes, technically, if you find 75% of the 285, it's the same as getting, uh, it's the same as getting the total and doing minus 25%. So this, you can change it to 0 0.75, and you get the same answer, okay? I'm just mentioning it because I know some people like to think that way. So you either think about it as, ah, if you're getting rid of 25%, you can immediately find 75% of your original, or you find the literal number for 25% and subtract that from the original amount, okay? So whatever floats your boat, those are two ways to do it. I think this one is more intuitive, but this one on the bottom is also faster, so I get why some people would aim for that. Whatever, enough blah blah, that is A part I. Now it gets juicy, and now is probably why you clicked on this video. And so for part, for part A, part double I, we need to calculate Rubens' monthly payment for this loan to two decimal places. 
And so here, there's a couple of things we need to give the context for. First things first, you probably already identified, ah, this is a finance problem. And for finance, you have two main tools. One of them is the finance app, and the other one is the formula on your formula booklet for compound interest. Now, you have two different tools, and although they are very similar, and technically the finance app is the formula for the compound interest, we need to acknowledge something. Whenever, yes, literally, whenever you have something about end of each month, which is going to be associated for PMT, okay? Whenever you have PMT, the only tool you can use is the finance app, okay? And just to show you guys quickly, if you go to the formula booklet and you look up compound interest, you can see that there's a bunch of stuff here that we can try to use and almost use, right? For example, they have FV, they have PV, R, K, K times N, right? And so the finance app, if I go over here, the finance app has a lot of this. So for the finance app, you press apps, then finance, then the TVM solver. And so here is pretty much anything, except that additionally, they have PMT. Ah, interesting. So PMT is the payment per month or the monthly payment, if you want to memorize it like that. And the compound interest formula that they give you is no PMT. You have no PMT here. And so this formula only works if there's no PMT. So that is difference number one, the no PMT thing. Difference number two is that on the finance app, you have an N. And for the compound interest one, you also have an N. But careful, on the finance app, you have big N. And on the compound interest one, you have small n. And yes, there's a difference. The difference is that big N is k times n. And so k times n gives you big N. Okay? So big N is k times n. And little n just stays as, as n. Okay? Now, I need to make a big, big disclaimer here. Because I'm sure some of you already disagree with me. The big, big disclaimer is that... The method I will suggest for you to do takes the perspective that big N is K times N, okay? If you look at the answer key, which let me just bring it up over here, just so that we all agree on this. If you look at the answer key, you can see that for this question, number four, sometimes you have what they say method one, and then you have what they say is method two. Okay, and so within this, all right, sometimes n will have to be one big n, and sometimes big n will have to be 51. Um, I guess there's better examples for this, but the idea is the same like, there's more than one way to use the finance app. Okay, and the way that I will suggest for you to use it is from the approach that big n is k times n. Okay, so I will explain all of it. Assuming that big N is K times N, there are ways for you to use the finance app and take small and take big N as small N. But for me, that is a lot less intuitive. Okay? So for each their own, this is just a disclaimer. For me, for what's coming, big N will be K times N. Okay? Why do I do it this way? Because then these two values at the end, the P and C, can be the same. So when big N is K times N, this PY and this CY can be the same. And the moment that you say that big N is equal to small N, that means that the PY and the CY are now not equal to each other. And for me, I'd much rather remember big N equals K times N and that these are the same rather than have the extra headache of trying to figure out what is PY and what is CY, okay? So I know that is a lot of blah, blah. I just want to leave really clear. These mark schemes can get confusing. There can be more than one method. And the difference of methods at the end of the day is what you choose big N to be. Okay. So for me, big N is going to be take K times N. Deal with it. That's how I'm going to do it. All right. Sorry for the long monologue, but I think it's very relevant 
to explain that. And so here for part A, part double I, you need to calculate Rubens's monthly payment for this loan to do decimal places. And so if you're trying to find the monthly payment, you are trying to find PMT. We already said that at the end of each month, our monthly payment is going to be PMT. So that means in this solver thing, I'm going to put everything as zero, okay, just so that we understand our approach. So everything will initially be zero, and we got to, whoops, I'm going to make these one because of domain. I'm going to show you how I fill everything in. And so I said that big N, the first thing I have to plug in, so big N, I said was K times N. Now, what is K? What is N? K, as it says here, is K is the number of compounding periods per year. Well, N is the number of years. Oh, okay, so N is number of years. K is number of compounding periods per year. Here they tell me that it is compounded monthly. How many months are in a year? 12. So K is going to be 12. Little n, we said, was number of years. What are the numbers of years in this case? It's a five-year loan. So little n is going to be 5. K is going to be 12. That means that big N, which we said was K times N, is just going to be 12 times 5 is just going to be 60. So big N da -da -da, is 60. This I percent, as we can see here, is the nominal annual rate of interest. So basically, your rate of interest. And here they say 4.5% nominal interest rate. Some of you might be freaking out by the fact that it says nominal interest rate per annum, which sounds incredibly fancy, but per annum, it's like per year, which is, well, look at that. Here it says annual interest rate. And so this annual interest rate is like the annum thing that for some reason at, at the test, they want to get mean with you and say per annum. Whatever, dude. 4.5% is the same R as this one, nominal annual interest rate. Okay, so here I can put 4.5 as it is. I'm sure some of you are thinking, but Mr. or a random guy on YouTube that I'm watching 10 hours before my exam, why is this not 0 0.045 if you're telling me that it's 4.5%? And I say, nah, uh watch on the left side there it says i percent so this number is already as a percent so when you say 4.5 you're saying it's 4.5 percent okay in fact if you put 45 you're saying it's 45 percent if you put 66 it is 66 percent if you put 4.5 it is 4.5 percent okay so that's with that pv is going to be your present value now, because it is a loan, and I'm going to try to explain this very well because a lot of questions, a lot of people do questions with this. See? So think about it this way it's a loan, right? It's a loan. So that means you asked money from the bank, right? And so our good old friend Ruben, if it was a loan, does he owe money to the bank or does the bank owe him? Does the bank promise to give him back money later? Nuh uh. Ruben got a loan. He's in debt. Ruben owes money to the bank. So, our, so think about it this way if you make a number line, okay, and you call this zero, all right? So here's a number line. Here's positive infinity. Over here's negative infinity. If you think about it, our good old friend Ruben right now owes the bank 21000 so 21,000, 213,750 czar. So that means right now he has negative 213,750 czar. And so your PB is here and through a series of PMTs, which are adding, so through a series of plus PMTs, I don't know how many, but through a series of positive PMTs, he's going to reach zero. And that will be when he has paid off his loan. And so this is also tells me that zero is going to be da -da -da -da, your future value. Our good old firm Ruben 
has a crap ton of debt, he needs to pay monthly a bunch of times until he does not owe anything, until his FB is zero. And so part A, part double I is how much PMT is he paying? All right, so this right now just revealed that your PV is negative 213, 750. Notice PV is negative. Yes, PV is negative because it's a loan. So because it's a loan, you have a negative PV, okay? He owes money, he has negative money. So that is my PV. PMT, I have not figured it out yet, so I'm gonna skip it. FV has to equal zero, okay? And one last thing that I forgot to mention is that PY and CY, with my method here saying that big N is K times N, PY and CY is just going to be K. And so for me, that method of approach is way friendlier. PYCY just has to be K as long as big N is K times N. So that being said, PYCY is going to be K. We said earlier that K was 12. Remember that K is how it compounds. So K is number of compounding periods. Because it's monthly, K equals 12. So you can put both of them as 12. PMT end of be or end or begin, I always see end. So whatever, dude, just leave it as end. I've never had to use begin. And now you can solve for PMT. Now you might be thinking, what the heck? How do you solve for PMT? Where, where do I press enter? And I say, ah, here you have a solver. It's a little bit different. So basically what you're telling your calculator is using all this information, what should my variables variables be? And so using all this information, solve for just PMT. Where is your solve button? Right above enter in green. So to hit that green button, you press alpha, enter, makes you hit solve, boom. Right there, you solved for PMT. And so part A, part double I is going to be 3,984. We can round it a little bit, of course, to 95. Don't forget your unit, czar. Okay? So that is what just happened. Okay? That is part A. Then for part B, you need to use your answer. Okay? From part A double I. So basically use your answer from just part A in general. To calculate the total amount of the total amount Ruben will pay over the life of the loan to the nearest czar, do not include the initial down payment. Do not include the initial down payment. All right, so I know this part might be a little bit confusing, the do not include, but basically what it's saying, okay, basically what it's saying is that Ruben already paid the initial down payment, okay, and what he has to pay right now is just what he owes the bank, right? So in other words, what it's asking you is, okay, all these PMTs he had to pay, what is the sum of all of these? So if you do this one plus this one plus this one plus this one plus how many times it has to happen, how much is that amount? And so the big question here is, how many months did our good old friend Ruben have to pay? All right. We know that Ruben, right, pays uh, pays monthly, right? So that means per year he pays, he pays 12. Ah, so he paid for 60 months because big N, da -da -da, big N is 60. So all you really have to do here is take your PMT and multiply by number of months. or periods or whatever. And so here you would have to be doing your answer from part A double I. So 3984.95 times 60, which is your number of months. Okay. So if you go ahead and do that, you will end up with da -da -da -da, this 3984.95 times 60. There it is. Two three nine zero nine seven, and because it's to the nearest czar, right? You want to make sure it's point zero, right? 
So rounded as 0. 0.0. Here we got exactly a, round, a number that's already rounded. See, so we can just leave it as this. And that would be for part B. Now it gets a little bit more exciting. Well, I mean, I think it's already exciting, but that sounds a little bit nerdy. Here it gets exciting because they tell us that Ruben... Ruben would like to repay the loan faster and increase his payments such that he pays 4,600 ZAR each month. Part C is find the total number of payments he will need to make to pay off the loan. And so here, what they be really loves to do is basically for the finance app, if I look at it now, you filled in all this information. And so what they be likes to do is like throw you like a curveball. You know, they throw you like a curveball and they change one of these variables up just a little bit. And so what you need to do is know how it changes. Okay. So think about it this way. He wants to repay the loan faster. Okay. And increase his payments such that he pays 4,600 czar each month. Now, I did mention that each month was a buzzword. In fact, I mentioned it for up here at the end of each month. So we're talking about our PMT. So PMT used to be around 3,900. Now our PMT, they tell us, is 4,600. So clearly, he's paying more per month, so his loan should get paid faster. There should be less months in it. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Imagine I owe you $10, and I say, okay, every week I will pay you $1 back. I'm going to take 10 weeks to, you know, pay back the $10. And now imagine that like midway through, I'm like, ah, you know what? I'll start paying $2 per week. Of course, it's going to be faster. Of course, it's going to be less weeks. And so here, in a much more complicated way, the IB tells you, all right, our good old friend Ruben wants to pay his loan faster. How would, would this affect the amount of time or the amount of monthly payments? Blah, blah, blah. And so the total number of monthly payments would have to be big N. That's also the other thing we have to identify. We don't know what big N is anymore. Big N is now going to be our X. This is what we need to solve for. And so you can take this calculator thing and you don't know what N is, right? So I'm going to leave it as zero, okay? Just like a placeholder, big N is zero. That's what we're trying to find. Now what changes? I still have the same percent. I still have the same amount of money owed. Okay. And PMT is what changed. So PMT is going to be 4,600. PV is still negative because it is a loan. MT PMT is going to be positive because you still want to reach an FV of zero. So really, it's like the same diagram that I drew here. Just that your PMTs are going to be a little bit faster so it should be less pmts less pmts in order to reach an fv of zero so it's a stronger pmt okay and that means that big n changed so you plug everything in k is still 12 so these are still 12 you solve for n uh, alpha enter to hit solve big n is that and so big n is going to be the again is going to be 51.153. Now, here's something interesting. At n equals 50, does he pay off the loan? At n equals 50, technically he does not pay off the loan because he still owes just a little bit. And so, because of context, your final answer has to be that big N is 52. What's the intuition of this? Let's go back to the example of I owe you $10 and I pay $1 per month. See? Imagine that I increase my payment to whatever, like one and a half dollars. Okay? And so, imagine that on the last month, I owe you 50 cents. Okay, I owe you half a dollar. And so even though I am paying you one and a half dollars per week, 
the last month, I owe you half a dollar. And so I can't just say, ah, dude, it's half a dollar, I'm done. No, man, I still owe you half a dollar. And so even if it's a small decibel, even if it's a small number, I still need to finish off paying the next week. Okay, so you finish off paying the next week. Your answer is going to be big N equals 52. All right. Awesome. So that is for part C. Big N has to be 52. Then they tell us that this strategy will result in Rubens's final payment being less than 4,600. Why would it be like that? It would be like that because our good old friend Ruben, okay, wants to pay in like the exact amount, okay, wants to pay in the exact amount of months. He doesn't want to owe half a dollar. He wants to pay everything like perfectly. Okay, that's the idea. He wants to pay everything perfectly. And so, I mean, let me rephrase this a little bit. Okay, that means that the moment he reaches the last month, he paid extra. Okay, that is a way better way to do it, to put it. Forget what I said like 10 seconds ago. Because we're saying that big N has to be 52, that means that he will end up paying a little bit extra. Okay, and so the other way you can think about it is how much did he pay at N of 51? And so how much did he pay at n equals 51? And then add just that small amount that's left. So basically, back to the example of owing like 50 cents or half a dollar at the very end. Well, you first have to figure out that it was half a dollar. And so how much will he pay extra or not? Blah, blah, blah. That's what we have to figure out. And so we need to determine the amount of Rubens's final payment to do two decimal places. So technically from here, you can put a big N of 51, okay? So this is just right before, okay, we have our final amount. And so if you make a big N of 51, so you make big N equals 51, and everything else remains the same, we can find, okay, we can find a new FV. Because let's understand, if I solve for FV from here, I am asking my calculator after 51 periods of paying 4,600 per month, how much future value I am yet to pay. This is like the half dollar we're trying to discover, okay? And so if you use solver here, and you get this amount, and so at n equals 51, we got an FV of 704, 0.156. Okay, this is very important to understand. So one before the last month, good old friend Reuven still owes around 704, around 704 czar. But per month, he pays 4,600. And so clearly, 4,600 is way bigger than 704. And that is why you have a decimal here of 0 0.153. Okay, that's the 704 that we're talking about. And so now this was for the 50 from 0 to 51 months. And now I can calculate month number 52. And so for month number 52, to make Rubens's final payment, you need to plug in values in a pretty special way. So because we're talking about just one month, Big N is going to be 1. Your percent is still the same. Your present value is how much you owe at this last month. So it's going to be 704. 0.16. Your PMT is what you're trying to find. And you want your loan to equal 0. This is my value of K. So it stays as 12. right? And so I, I know that I said that big N equals K times N. But with this context, you only want to find the last month, so big N will be 1, okay? A lot of times, by context, big N has to change, and that's the name of the game. Understanding when this changes, how that works, etc. This is a very special scenario where 
you only need to calculate for one month, for month number 52. And so for that, you plug in your values like this. Let me go over it one more time. So big N equals one because it's only month number 52. Your percent is the same because they have not changed your percent. Your PV is 704, which was the FV of N equals 51. So that means at the end of month number 51, Ruben still owed 704 czar. And so from month 52, you put 704 czar as present value. And you need to see how much you need to pay monthly to reach zero for FV. So how much he needs to pay monthly in order to get basically um, in order to get in order to pay off the loan with FV equals zero. See? So you find PMT from here. So now I can do all the solve functions. So I press alpha, enter, boom. There it is. And some of you might be thinking, what the heck? Why is it not just 704.16? And I'm going to say, uh-huh. It's because the bank earns money. And so for the bank to earn money, he's they're going to charge a little bit more. That's why you have the percent over here. That's why it's just a little bit more, right? So yes, he owes technically 704, but how much does he have to pay? A little bit more because the bank earns from percent and stuff, see? And so from here for month number 52, we found that the PMT of that, right, was 706.80, right? Here it gave it to me negative because I forgot to put a negative PV over here. So technically, if I go back to how I was always doing it, our good old friend Ruben still owes negative 704.16. So you find the PMT from here. That makes a little bit more sense. See? So apologies for that. I forgot to put a negative PV. Why negative? Because we're talking about loan. So that is that. See? And so the... Da, da, da. So for part B, the, the amount of Rubens' final payment to two decimal places is the value of this PMT. See? And so to two decimal places, your whole number was 706.8006. So two decimal places, you count one, two. You want to round this number. So do you round it up or keep it the same? You keep it the same. So 706.80 will be your final answer for part D. And last but not least, for part E, we need to determine the total amount Ruben will save to the nearest SAR by making the higher monthly payments. So the whole point of making higher monthly payments is that he needs to pay less months. And if he needs to pay less months, then that means, then that means that the bank charges less interest. How would it charge less interest? It charges less interest because each month they charge a little bit. Right? And so if there's less months going around, there's less interest they can charge. Intuitively, that's the main idea. The real world is a little bit different, but let's leave it at that. Okay? So, for part E, he's making the higher monthly payments. And so when he did the higher monthly payments, how much was it? When he did the higher monthly payments, we were talking about 4600 so that's the first thing I'm going to write down for part E. We have the 4,600 per month. Now, for how many months did this happen? For 51. So he did it for 51, and at the very end, he had to pay 706. In other words, for 51 months, he paid 4,600, and at the very end, he had to pay 706.80. So more intuitively, you can think about it as this is from 0 to 51 months. And over here is the 52nd month. Okay? So if he pays like this, he ends up with da -da -da -da, 51 times 4,600 plus 706.8. So this gives me that number. 23, 5306.80. So this is amount that our good old friend Ruben would pay if he decides. So this is, this is um, and czar, right? So th this is for the uh, higher month, higher monthly payment, higher monthly payment. So if he pays 
for the higher monthly payment, this is how much he pays in total. So this would be his new total with higher monthly payment. But part E is asking, how much will he save? Because he chose to pay the higher interest. And so, with the context of the problem, in which part was he paying with the lower amount per month, right? Everything before this. So everything before this paragraph is going to be less, right? And so right before this, in part B, I know this is like scratched all over, so let me erase a little bit. So for part B, we were saying the total amount for the life of the loan and in which context it was for a monthly payment that was a little bit lower. And so technically, I need to compare what I just got with part B. So what I just got with part B, okay, part B being this number here. So I can take the 239. 097, if I recall correctly. Uh huh. So this guy here, so ba basically part B. So you take from part B, right? You subtract it from what you just calculated using the higher monthly payment. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, the difference or how much he saves by doing the higher monthly payments. More intuitively, think about it this way this is the lower monthly payment, so the lower PMT, and this is the higher PMT. Okay, so using lower PMT, he pays this total, and using higher PMT, he pays this total. Clearly, there's a difference. Clearly, there is some amount he saves. And so here, it's to the nearest czar, okay? So you want to keep the numbers nice and rounded. Let's go ahead and show what happens. So from here, you have the answer from part B, so the 239, 097, minus what I just calculated, right? This gives me the 379.2. 3790.2. Now, because they wanted to the nearest czar, which one is the nearest czar? The nearest czar, you take this number, you say, do you round it up or keep it the same? You keep it the same. The same. So the nearest czar is actually 379 as is. So for part E, it will be this number here. Okay? Guys, I think this is a very good exercise to understand the finance problem like at its depth because everything gets thrown at you. See, like almost everything that can happen gets thrown at you. It's a loan problem, which is usually weird. And so the intuition I want to share with you guys is that when it is a loan problem, PV is negative. Okay, PV is negative when it's a loan problem. If it's a problem of like, Good old friend Jimmy puts a hundred bucks into a, his uh, his uh, savings account and wants to see how much he earns like down the road, right? Like five years later. Then it's not exactly that PV being negative and stuff like that. There, then it's a little bit different, okay? But because of context, there's a couple general rules you can draw from this, okay? The method I like to suggest, as I said, is that big N is K times N. It just keeps it a little bit more clean because that way PY and CY is just K. It's not as confusing as the other method, in my opinion. And the other thing you need to consider is, okay, so it's it's a loan, so you're going to be putting a negative PV, a positive PMT, until you reach FV of zero. So that is another interesting thing. FV equals zero because we're talking about a loan. All right? And why did FV change near the end? It changed near the end because on month 51, he was going to have to pay a little bit less. Okay, because at month at the end of month 51, he almost paid everything. He almost paid everything. He just needed to pay month 52, but month 52 was less amount than the monthly payment. So he needed to recalculate that, okay? Including the percent, including all that stuff, blah, 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 okay? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a hard one, but I hope I helped. And yeah, hope this helped. I'll see you around. That is for number four.